Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we're going to review the men's final of the Australian Open 2020. Big big congratulations to Novak Djokovic winning his 8th Australian Open and 17th Grand Slam title overall. Um, so in this video I'm going to review how Djokovic has won the match against team. We're going to look at overall match statistics and then we're going to go through from set 1 to set 5, uh, where have been the cracking points, which have been the deciding factors. And after that, I'm going to quickly talk about uh, the Grand Slam race, let's call it like that, because Roger Federer is still leading on top with 20 Grand Slam titles, not all at 19. And Djokovic now has went up to 17. So there's only two behind Nadal and three behind Federer. Um, people see him potentially uh, overtaking Nadal and Federer. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, another important news, big thing that uh, Djokovic is going to become world number one next week. Nadal has dropped out in the quarterfinals. So Djokovic has stacked up now enough points to overtake Nadal next week. So that's also interesting because uh, in the number of weeks um, he's most probably going to overtake Pete Sampras this year and potentially if nobody can overtake him again, Nadal uh, cannot get back on top, then uh, Djokovic might overtake Federer as well on the number of uh, weeks as world well, number one. All right, so let's get down to it. The breakdown of the final overall match statistics. So first serve percentage, uh, first serve win rate, second serve win rate, winners, aces, and unforced errors. Um, double faults. These are the number. These are the stats I'm going to look at and talk about. So Djokovic first serve percentage was at 65%, first serve win rate was 76, which is high. <clears throat> he's, he's managed to edge the first the second serve win rate just above 50%, which is on the circumstances a satisfactory stat. He had 46 winners, but uh, 57 unforced errors. Nine aces, but only five uh, only five double faults, yeah. On team. On the other hand, 64% on the first serve, 69% win rate, second serve percent win rate is 45, which is quite low. Um, most of the times when a player is below 50%, that's never a good sign and they tend to lose. He had a higher number of winners than Djokovic at 55, but uh, also a higher number of unforced errors, 57. He had 13 aces and 5 double faults. So uh, this is the overall match, Djokovic winning uh, over team 6-4, 4-6, 2-6, 6-3 and 6-4. So in the first set, Djokovic winning 80, uh, putting 80% 80 of his first serves in play, winning 65% of the first serves and winning 80% of the second serve, which is mighty impressive. He had a low number of winners and a high number of forced errors. Nonetheless, he was controlling the game and uh, making team miss a lot of points and a lot of balls, uh, forcing him to go for much. Uh, team, 73%, uh, first serve percentage, 63% win rate. And this is what probably cost him the set, the low number of uh, second serve points won, which is only 23. He had 12 winners, but 16 on four errors, five aces to one double fault. So, these are just the numbers, uh, a, quick, uh, a quick look back of uh, what happened basically on court. Um, Djokovic has gone off to a flying start. He started serving for the, he started serving for the first set. I mean, he started to serve first in the first set, got one off, one love up. Team was serving to uh, get to one all. He got broken in a very tight game. Djokovic was super motivated and super happy. You could see on his face the, the way he was pumping his fist and grimacing towards his team with great poise and determination. Um, he went 4-1 up and he really looked in cruise control. He was moving team around really well. 
he seemed to be able to change the direction of the ball incredibly well, made, made teams crumble a lot. Um, nonetheless, team did manage to get back to 4-0. Uh, after six games, you had the impression that team is slowly but surely getting into the match. Um, he was going through a lot at the beginning, he was missing a lot of points, he was missing especially a lot with his backhand on the line, which is normally a reliable shot for him. Um, but nonetheless, as, as I said, you got the impression that he was getting back into the match and doing pretty well. Uh, he got the break back and uh, at 4-0 at when Djokovic was serving, Djokovic went 5-4 uh, up. And then team crumbled a little bit under the scoreboard pressure and lost his serve. And with that, he lost the set. So at that point, I thought, oh well, uh, team managed to get back into the set and he was playing so well. This might get really costly because um, I had the impression that he was getting above Djokovic, winning more points getting more confident and um, it was like he was playing well at the end of the, that first set and uh, he was somehow at that moment a better player. For the most part of the first set Djokovic was the better player but in the end, toward the end, I had the feeling that it's more like team and he lost the set so that's not going to help because He's one set behind and he's going to have to keep pushing in the second set. So if you look at the numbers in the, in the second set, Djokovic had a first serve percentage of 62, win rate 76, and uh, only 36% on the second serve. In the first set it was 80, so a drop to 36 is really considerable. He had seven winners but 13 on forced errors, uh, one ace and three double faults. Team was not putting too many first serves into play, only 53%, but the ones he was putting into play, uh, he was winning most of them at 81%. Second serve win rate was uh, uh, 50%. Um, and he had 13 winners compared to 11, so he's managed to cut down a little bit on those on forced errors. He made a, a bit more winners one more winner actually than in the previous set and uh, he, yeah he managed to to edge out that second set um, so in the second set team had made a break early it looked like in the second set that although team is the better player Djokovic has managed to swing back he started to look a little bit tired Djokovic like he wasn't moving that well um, the, the unforced error count was, was also pretty high. He couldn't change the direction on the ball so well. Team was hitting his spots a little bit better and nonetheless he managed to get the break back. But then um, he, he's got broken again immediately by team. Um, Djokovic did not make life easy on himself at this point because he was just taking too long on the serve, the umpire, uh, Damien de Mussoir, gave him a warning for, t uh, for time violation and two points later or three points later when he, he was uh, serving down at break point, he went over the shot clock again, so de Mussoir gave him another warning which automatically meant he lost his first serve and by that uh, he hit a slow second serve team, hit a good return, and Djokovic just over pushed on the forehand, missed the shot, and uh, because of that break, he basically lost the set. Um, team managed to win the second set 6 2. So, to me, it looked like that was a justified warning because he was under pressure. There is a shot clock, he was just taking too much time, and the missile was in his right and he had to give him basically that warning. Djokovic was not happy at all when walking back to the chair after getting broken. He was patting uh, the umpire's leg uh, three times and saying really sarcastically, 
yeah, good job, especially on the second one. So you have the feeling that huh, this, this match might get a little bit away from him. So if you go on to the third set, um, first serve percentage on Djokovic, really low. First serve win rate, 64% second serve win rate, early 46, so below 50. Uh, 12 winners, but, uh, but also 13 on four stars. Team on the other hand, uh, still steady at 53% first serves in, 165% of, of those first serves, but managed to win 67% of the second serves compared to 15 in the previous set. 11 winners, only 7 on 4 stars, 2 aces and 2 top faults. So the set is won by team to 6 games to 2. Um, team had a 4 love lead in the third set. So Djokovic was serving first in the third set, got broken right away. Team consolidated to love. Same story in the next two games. Team breaks Djokovic and consolidates again. He was full of up. And by that point, you felt that Djokovic was really tired. I mean, he was missing so many balls. Team was rock solid. You had the impression that Djokovic is, I don't know, he's going to faint up there. He's just breathing heavily and he's not moving as well he used to is uh, having trouble keeping up the pace on his serve especially on the second serve he was late on a few shots or just pushing the ball long something happened um, after the team was leading for love Djokovic started to play a uh, sort of a tennis where he was trying to make life easier on himself just hitting a good serve and hitting a winner after that, moving team around a little bit. Um, so he didn't lose his serve after that, basically, after he was full up down in the third. So everything went on serve and team on the third set, 6-2. Moving on to the fourth set, uh, Djokovic was uh, picking up his game by, by this time. And his first serve percentage went really up to 79% and he's been winning 89% of the first serve, second serve 50%. He's hit 13 winners, managed to cut down considerably on the unforced errors. So he, he had 13 in the previous set, now only 5 and 2 aces. Team was doing well on the first serve percentage, it was an improvement for him as well. First serve win rate was very impressive too, but on the second serve win rate, he was just too low at 22%. Uh, he had 10 winners, 7 on 4 stars. So this was a very close set and very tight set. And uh, Djokovic has, has, has uh, managed to break once. And that break was basically enough for him to secure the set because he, wasn't, he, he did not get broken again in that set. In the fifth, Djokovic uh, still had a high percentage of first serves in 66, 84% win rate, 60% win rate on the second serve. He hasn't been hitting so many winners, he had a high number of unforced errors, but you still have the impression that he is controlling most of the, most of the rallies. And team was back again in the same situation like he was in the first set where he had to scramble a lot. He, he was many times just too far back in the court, um, where it's always difficult to hit really through the court and land a lot of uh, super ground strokes near the baseline. So he made a lot of unforced errors. Unforced error count 16 in the, third, in the fifth set for team. He had a high percentage of first serves in, win rate on the first serve 64, on the second 55, it, these are not bad numbers. He still had nine winners, he didn't make any double faults, but number of unforced errors was pretty high. Um, Djokovic broke to go 3-1 up. Uh, I mean, after he broke, he went 3-1 up in the fifth. And although you had the impression towards the last service games, of Djokovic, the team may have a chance, and he was trying to be strong again and hit back at Djokovic, just couldn't do it. So basically, 
that single break again decided the fifth set. So this was a breakdown um, set by set. As I said, Djokovic in the second and especially third set looked like uh, he's not going to make it physically. He took a bathroom break at the end of the third set. I think that helped him a lot. Somehow he managed to compose himself and um, team basically was fighting hard like a raged bull uh, in each and every set. And uh, <laughs> Djokovic, I'm not saying he, he didn't fight in the third, but it was like a little respite for him. Um, in the first set, he was so dominant, he had to work a little bit harder toward the first, uh, to, toward the end of the first set. But it didn't look like to me he had to work as hard as on the team. So the point I'm trying to make is Djokovic simply played a smarter match. Uh, he preserved that less energy he had and played extremely well in the key moments. I think that's what has won him the, the match, basically. So if we look a little bit at the numbers on, on Grand Slams, uh, as I said, Federer is at 20, Nadal at 19, and Djokovic has climbed up to 17. That makes the whole Grand Slam race even more interesting because the next one is the French Open. And normally the, the clear favorite for that is Rafa Nadal. Team was the finalist in 2018 and 2019. Um, so he's a very strong contender uh, at the French Open for the title as well. He did not manage to beat Djokovic in this uh, final, this time around, but he had already two tries against Rafa. Um, I would rate his ch chances pretty high at the French Open. Nonetheless, I was saying at the beginning of, uh, of this year that I don't really see an action player winning the Australian Open or somebody outside of the, of the big three. I was almost wrong. I would not have minded to be wrong since the new generation is really knocking on the door. I had the impression that team was really fighting so hard and he was really close to win. Maybe his route was more difficult, even though he's younger, but it took a little bit more out of him. Djokovic was very dominant throughout the whole tournament. He's lost only one set uh, prior to getting to the final in the first round against Struff. He had, hadn't played even 13 hours in the entire tournament. The team was above 18, total time spent on court over 18 hours. So that's a considerable difference. And the team had to beat Nadal in the, in the quarters, the fourth set match over four hours, grueling. And against Zverev, he also had a long match and grueling match. So this is no excuse, I'm just stating the facts. And uh, Djokovic was smart. He reserved his energy well. He he's done probably more points winning a little bit more easily on his serve than he used to in the past. Even if this was not super evident in today's match, it was throughout the tournament. Um, so this puts him in a good position to try to catch up with Rafa and Roger. Um, one more final thought on this one. So there's. Three, there are three players in the Open Era who have played at least seven Grand Slam finals and they won all seven. So Pete Sampras is the one winning at Wimbledon seven times. He's played seven finals and he's won them all. Now Djokovic was the one with seven Australian Open titles, seven finals plays, played seven titles won. And now he's up to eight. So. So to say, he, surpa he surpassed Sampras uh, on this stat. Eight finals, eight finals won. This is incredible that a, a player can be so incredibly consistent throughout a tournament for so many years and every tournament making the final winning. Um, another impressive feat like that is from Rafa Nadal. He's played 12. I'm repeating myself, 12 French Open finals and he's won them all. So, 
if you compare it to that, uh, <laughs> there is still some some uh, effort to be made by Djokovic to get to 12. But uh, let's not take this uh, incredible achievement away from Novak. Winning eight Australian Open finals from eight is a staggering performance. Even Federer has played. Federer has played, I think, 12 finals uh, at Wimbledon, and he, he has eight titles. So we all know how, how good Federer is, and uh, even he himself couldn't win all the Wimbledon finals he's played. All right, let me know what you think. Um, do you think it's going to be Djokovic, Nadal, or Federer finishing as number one with Grand Slam titles won? And who is your favorite right now for the French Open? Please let me know what you think down below. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.